The Monster Hunter game world has a number of unique properties. The heritage of the in-game cultures is fundamental to the storyline. There is grittiness to the design of the monsters and a sense of ease in the daily life of the villagers, which are inextricably linked. There are funny moments, scenes of grilling meat come to mind. There is music for the symphony as well as music of traditional cultures, happiness, anger, sorrow, and pleasure. As in writing, all require a vocabulary as a means of communication, and as composers, musical instruments provide our words and phrases for describing the teeming world of Monster Hunter. Another aspect of playing these games is the sense that the hunters on the screen have an actual existence and are in balance with the natural environment. On the flip side, I think you are given a sense of the weight of their lives and the travails of struggling to coexist with the brutality of nature. These are themes which are often difficult to express in words, but whenever I work on a Monster project, I feel my task is to create music that evokes the act of living life to the fullest. That's Yoko Komiyama uh, from an interview called Behind the Music of Monster Hunter, and this was for Monster Hunter 3, I believe. So, this is an old interview. Monster Hunter does not require a narrative chain of events to fulfill the quota of story, because Monster Hunter's experience is a self-constructed journey for the player. Monster Hunter's story is the individual player's progression through the game's content. The individual journey is unique for each and every player. Their choices in which quests they tackle and for what purpose is up to them. Whenever you struggle in Monster Hunter, you are actively writing the conflict of the story, because it's your story. The player has control over their game experience. This is a hunting simulation game, after all. When the player defeats the flagship monster and then the final boss, it is considered a grand victory that probably took you like 30 or so hours of personal growth in order to achieve this accomplishment. Putting any narratives that they've put in aside, Monster Hunter is still a journey constructed by the player, bottom line. Perhaps with my fears that the many nuances of Monster Hunter have been drained from the series, and the truth that new players have a completely different understanding of what Monster Hunter is compared to me, the community has, for some reason, created this myth that Monster Hunter isn't about story, or that the story was never good, or that you should never expect a story, or other statements akin to this. And I want to make this clear, Monster Hunter really isn't like a party game, there is an attempt to deliver a message in these games. There is a point to everything you're seeing on screen. In many of the early titles, Capcom did not focus on stringing together much of a dramatic narrative. Instead, Capcom delivered tidbits of lore and information indirectly. Anything from the attention to detail with the monster behaviors, or the blink and you miss it NPC dialogue, there is an established overall message or theme to Monster Hunter, and it's delivered through subtext or atmosphere if you want to call it that, as well as the player's personal journey and experiences within the game's world. There is a reason I dwelled on Monster Hunter 2's subtextual storytelling at the climax of the game. Despite the game being in Japanese and I cannot read Japanese, the game's ending still made me contemplate human morality and my own existence. And it, it's not like I had like a total mental breakdown or anything, alright? But even though I didn't understand what people were saying within the game, the game still made me think, and that's what's important. To recap really quick for those who don't know or haven't seen my long video on Monster Hunter 2, throughout Monster Hunter 2, the player is chasing the storm dragon Cashela Diora. After three fights with the monster, two of which are repel quests and the third one is finally the kill quest, the player manages to defeat this dragon. This is on top of all the other nonsense that Monster Hunter 2 pushes on you that forces you to play by its rules. So, the objective to defeat Kishela Diora requires patience, understanding, and most importantly, skill, a lot like the other games. After defeating Kishela Diora, the player is given access to the final map of the game, the Ancient Tower. The game has trained the player at that point to mine in every locale any chance that you get, because you need to be constantly mining. So the player will likely immediately use a pickaxe on the tower at the mining spots, only to discover that the tower drops Cashela Diora scales. The game doesn't ever directly say, oh yes, the tower was built from Cashela Diora scales, but you can piece two and two together. 
The tower was built out of Gashela Diora bodies, likely thousands of them. The tower is a statement made by humanity, an ancient group of people within the game, claiming that they triumph over nature, over their gods, which were the Elder Dragons. Despite this, the tower is decrepit and filled with dragons now. Humanity's triumph was fleeting, and no matter how many gods they slay, even if it was 10,000, they were still not gods themselves. They forgot their place in nature and the universe, and ultimately they gained nothing and died out. The overarching conflict of Monster Hunter is this ongoing battle between humanity and the Elder Dragons. There's a huge question, a debate, in-universe on how humanity should live. Despite the lessons of ancient civilizations, humanity still builds fortresses like Don Dorma and continue to grow. It's in our nature. The other option is to live nomadic lives, but that hinders progress. Humans would rather keep building and building, and we don't want to stop until we reach the moon and beyond. On top of that, it's made our lives easier by settling and not being nomadic, so this should be considered a good thing, right? We are the superior race over the monsters, so we should show them their place, right? They are monsters, after all. And as you play the games, you start to realize, actually, they're just animals. And humanity can be just as much of an environmental disaster as a Teostra or Cachella Diora. Monster Hunter is an excellent conversation about stewardship and humanity's place alongside nature. It's all subtle, and it's all interwoven into the player's personal journey. The individual player may even ask these moral questions themselves. They may stop and think, what if we are the real monsters? You also may never think about this at all. And actually, I think that that is the point of Monster Hunter's message. The fact that there are individuals who don't even consider these questions is exactly the conversation. When you argue in the comments about whether or not it actually matters, how this universe works, what, what is canon, if this level of hunting is canon or even morally correct, that's the exact stuff that the characters in Monster Hunter are discussing themselves because we are the characters. I think it's very easy to get caught up in the gameplay elements of Monster Hunter and the combat and forget its soul, especially in newer titles where everything is so streamlined. With less hindrances on the player and the faster the player can get into combat, they aren't really forced to be fully exposed to the game's quote-unquote story, which has always been there. It's funny, the message of Monster Hunter is becoming more meta with every title, because the players are doing exactly what the game warns you not to do. The heritage of the in-game cultures is fundamental to the storyline. I hold Monster Hunter so dear to me because of how powerful this is, and it's exactly what Monster Hunter is. Now, there are actual narratives to Monster Hunter. There are dramas that Capcom includes, and they're complementary to the player's journey. It is the spice to flavor their adventure, or to motivate the player to complete more challenging tasks for a greater emotional reward. These dramas are the one thing that is outside of the player's control. Now, people usually hold Monster Hunter 4 to high regard for its excellent integration of narrative and dramas into the quest system. I actually want to eventually do a 3 hour video on Monster 4 like the Monster 2 video, so I'll save my best points for that video, but I have a few here. So to recap, the caravan travels from village to village, solving issues regarding local monsters. The hunter's objectives change from location to location, but they serve as exactly as their job entails. The hunter is a bounty hunter, and they are meeting new clients while they go from village to village. This is excellent because you get to actually meet the people who are giving you the quests, and you're always meeting new people who have new quests. You get to learn their life story and why you're doing the quest for them, because usually it's to improve their quality of life. This was somewhat in Monster Hunter 2 and 3, but I believe Monster Hunter 4 integrates it the best. You could argue that World does this too, but I would consider it, I think most people consider it, less successful in actually being engaging or meaningful. Back to Monster Hunter 4, the Gore Megala is the flagship and also the final boss. The threat of this Elder Dragon is the overarching narrative of this game, matching the previous titles and matching the overarching story of Monster Hunter. There is an established legend about the Gore Megala, that it appears on a cycle after several generations, cycles being the main theme of Monster Hunter 4, the little windmills and the guild logo being the four-pronged star that moves in a circle. It's all a cycle. It's like the four seasons. Gore Megala and Shagru Megala, they're, they're aesthetic opposites. 
switching forms on a cycle. It's all deliberate design. Even if you notice the new weapons, the charge blade and the insect glaive, the way that you attack is it's they're moving in complete rotations. It's a full spin. Everything in Monster Hunter is being repeated over and over. It is the heritage of in-game cultures that need to be repeated so that new generations understand. While all the villages you encounter consistently deal with various monster-related problems and the ongoing threat of Gormagala, the nomadic caravan does not. By constantly moving, they are not at threat. One with the wind, I suppose. The caravan is only threatened once, and that's by the Gormagala, and it's a direct attack. This sets up the rivalry between the hunter and the dragon. Was their ultimate showdown fated? Was it destiny and pre-planned by the powers that be, or was it all just a coincidence that the player ultimately is the one that has to quell the cycle in the end? You know, like Monster Hunter 2, you face the final boss in an ancient ruin by a civilization, also worn away by time. To quickly touch on Monster Hunter 3's narrative, because it relates to this, it also ends with an Elder Dragon fight in an ancient ruin. While Gormagala was a clear villain that was morally correct to destroy, um, and it was fated by divine powers, apparently. The same cannot really be said for Cedius. Cedius isn't really... Cedius isn't, like, objectively evil. The Cedius is causing earthquakes to Moga Village, and yeah, that sucks, obviously. You don't want to live in fear of frequent earthquakes when you, when, you're, when you are a seafaring fisheries village. It affects their entire livelihood. The solution given to them from the bureaucratic guild is for Moga to simply relocate to a safer spot. Culturally, this sucks even more. The hunter has no choice but to go against the request of the guild and face the Cedius with the help of the villagers. And of course, the hunter successfully repels the monster and it goes away, saving the village. The hunter doesn't even need to kill the dragon, and you don't. It was all about showing the dragon that Moga was their home and they weren't gonna move. It's about showing them who's boss. And it's not really about just senseless killing. I've said this multiple times before in other videos, but the Lost features that connect the player directly with the villages and hunting in Monster Hunter 3 and 2 as well are sorely missed as they envelop the player further into their self-constructed story. Having a village ask to eat dinner with you or when you're free hunting for the village and it actually provides food and resources for that village, this creates a more lasting impact on your player's story compared to the simplified experience in World and Rise. Monster Hunter doesn't necessarily need plot twists or wars or drama of that sort. I think when people think of story, they think of those things. And no, Monster Hunter does not feature any sort of gripping character drama, and it's because it doesn't need to. Monster Hunter 2, 3, and 4, without any sort of gripping character drama, still made me think about my actions as a human being and my place in the universe. Through my personal journey in the game and my interactions and understandings of the world and the characters. And that is a story. That is a meaningful story. And it's not that I'm necessarily looking for better drama, I'm looking for a better symbiosis of player growth with a meaningful message. Part of what I'm actually looking for is higher difficulty and a further push for player immersion that allows me to find my own story and my own journey alongside whatever narrative they provide. When Rise is such an easy game to complete, and I also don't really agree with the actions of the characters or accept their troubles with the Elder Dragons, I end up having no interest in the final battle, even if it's also the quota of fighting an Elder Dragon at an ancient ruin, just like the previous games. Furthermore, if Capcom insists on including character drama, I still request that Capcom at least try harder. As my friend Reddit Tosker has pointed out, the storyline in the Witcher event quest in World has more compelling character drama than all of World's story combined. In other words, Capcom knows how to write compelling character drama, and also knows how to integrate it into their game design, they just choose not to. It is absolutely possible to integrate a decent dramatic narrative without plot holes into the main quest chain, as well as provide the space for the player to form their own journey along the way. And I know this is possible because Monster Hunter 4 did it. The point that I came to with this video is simple. When you say, every time you say Monster Hunter isn't about story, you are actually perpetuating the story. In our progression, our self-constructed journey through the game, our perception of the game's reality becomes monstrous, Monster Hunter. The player and the NPCs unite together to triumph over this monstrous reality. 
much like humanity's consistent attempts to triumph over our own reality. To be blinded by the desire to triumph over reality is exactly what destroyed the people who existed before us. Monster Hunter is a representation of that blindness. The more the player ignores the heritage of their cultures, the more they admit the message of Monster Hunter. We are blinded by our desire to triumph over our reality, and the game is just going to pat you on the back for feeling that way. As our player journeys expand and interconnect, we share our ignorance of the acts we are performing, and thus the game becomes more and more meta. In its current form, the whole series is just satire. I've grown to accept World and Rise as basically being parodies of the series. Their outlandish and hypocritical behavior and actions, now that I think about it, they, they still push the overall message of Monster Hunter, even if it's flying over everyone's heads. In Legends of the Guild, the Ace Hunter actually indirectly reveals how hypocritical and impractical the Guild's regulations are. I would love to see Capcom double down on that, the Guild's bureaucracy, because that would be an interesting drama. I guess the big takeaway is, um, people like to say that Monster Hunter has no story, or the story doesn't matter, or people don't play for the story. Um, why, why are you asking for a better story, Jacob? Because Monster Hunter's never had a good story. I hope I've proved that there is a story to Monster Hunter. There is a point to the aesthetics in Monster Hunter and to the, the narratives that they're writing, and it's not wrong for me to ask for that further. And I think that more people need to be aware that this game has the potential, these games have the potential to move you as a player, to make you think as a player, as well as being a fun action game. It's possible. Thank you for watching, hopefully this wasn't too complicated. <laughs>